good morning students and welcome back to the class in a previous session we have studied about the force acting on a current carrying conductor when it is kept in a uniform magnetic field we have studied that whenever a current carrying conductor is kept in a magnetic field it experiences a force due to which it starts moving there is a possibility that the conductor will be displaced from its position so today we will learn about a practical application of this concept so we will be studying about dc motors prior to that let us quickly recapitulate what we had uh, learned because this will make it easier for us to understand the working of a dc motor so we have learned that when an electron beam passes through the magnetic field it gets deflected from its original path and now this deflect deflection from its original path is primarily due to the force that is a result of the interaction of the magnetic fields the magnetic fields created by the flowing electrons and the magnetic field of the permanent magnet so obviously depending upon the direction in which the current is flowing in the conductor it will be experiencing the force so it may be displaced in different directions depending upon the strength of the current the direction of the current and the manner in which that conductor has been kept in the magnetic field we had also studied about this very important experiment that led to many conclusions we had studied that when this conductor ab is placed in the magnetic field of this horseshoe shaped magnet how it was getting displaced when current was switched on we studied that this displacement is dependent upon the strength of the magnetic field the strength of the current the direction in which the current is flowing and the manner in which this conductor has been placed in this magnetic field a practical setup of the same experiment can be observed in this way where we have replaced the straight conductor ab with a coil a coil comprising of several turns of copper wire so when this coil is kept in the magnetic field and current is allowed to flow through it we observe a similar effect that is it starts rotating now obviously the speed of rotation will be dependent upon the strength of the magnetic field i should be saying strength of magnetic fields because there are two magnetic fields one due to the magnet and another is the magnetic field created due to the current flowing in this coil so stronger is the magnetic field more will be the speed of rotation of the coil secondly obviously the direction in which current is flowing will be deciding the way it is turning whether it is a clockwise rotation or an anti clockwise rotation number of turns in the coil will also decide the strength of the magnetic field so all these lead us to a conclusion that if we place a coil in a magnetic field it experiences a force due to which it starts rotating now i would like to tell you that whenever the motion is a rotation that is instead of having a linear displacement if the conductor is rotating about an axis a turning effect is observed then instead of using the word force we make use of the term torque torque is actually the rotational analog of force so we may say that whenever the current carrying conductor is kept in a uniform magnetic field it experiences a torque due to which it may start rotating and obviously the speed of rotation will be decided by the strength of the magnetic field the current flowing through the coil the direction in which the current is flowing in the coil this practical setup finds its use in the construction of the topic of our study for today that is the dc motor but before we actually study about the basic construction principle and working of a dc motor let us go back to a little bit about the history of electric motors the first electric motors were simple electrostatic devices described in experiments by scottish monk andrew gordon and american experimenter benjamin franklin in the 1740s 
the theoretical principle behind them was discovered but not published by Henry Cavendish in 1771. This law was discovered independently by Charles Augustine D. Coulomb in 1785 who published it. The invention of the electrochemical battery by Alessandro Volta in 1799 made possible the production of persistent electric currents. After the discovery of the interaction between such a current and a magnetic field, namely the electromagnetic interaction by Hans Christian Oersted in 1820, much progress was soon made. In fact, it only took a few weeks for André Marie Ampere to develop the first formulation of the electromagnetic interaction and present the Ampere's force law that described the production of mechanical force by the interaction of an electric current and a magnetic field. The first demonstration of the effect with a rotary motion was given by Michael Faraday in 1821 using the setup as shown in your screen. A free hanging wire was dipped into a pool of mercury on which a permanent magnet was placed. When a current was passed through the wire, the wire rotated around the magnet showing that the current gave rise to a closed circular magnetic field around the wire. Barlow's wheel was an early refinement to this Faraday demonstration. In 1827, Hungarian physicist Anios Jedlik started experimenting with electromagnetic coils. After Jedlik solved the technical problems of continuous rotation with the invention of the commutator, he called his early devices as electromagnetic self-rotors. Although they were used only for teaching in 1828, Jedlik demonstrated the first device to contain the three main components of practical DC motors, the stator, rotor and commutator. The first commutator DC electric motor capable of turning machinery was invented by British scientist William Sturgeon in 1832. Following Sturgeon's work, a commutator type direct current electric motor was built by American inventor Thomas Davenport which he patented in 1837. So let us now see what is an electric motor. So obviously an electric motor is an electric machine that converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. Most electric motors operate through the interaction between the motor's magnetic field and electric current in a wire to generate force in the form of torque applied on the motor's shaft. Electric motors can be powered by direct current DC such as from batteries, motor vehicles or rectifiers or by alternating current sources AC such as a power grid, inverters or electrical generators. Electric motors may be classified by considerations such as power source type, internal construction application and type of motion output. In addition to AC versus DC types, motors may be brushed or brushless, may be of various phase and may be either air cooled or liquid cooled. Electric motors are found in industrial fans, blowers and pumps, machine tools, household appliances, power tools and disc drives. In certain applications such as in regenerative braking with traction motors, electric motors can be used in reverse as generators to recover energy that might otherwise be lost as heat and friction. Electric motors produce linear or rotary force intended to propel some external mechanism. Principle of operation of DC motor. This we have already studied in the recapitulation part of today's lesson. I already told you that whenever a carrying conductor is kept in a uniform magnetic field, it experiences a force. And instead of using a straight conductor, if we make use of a coil, then a rotational effect is observed and that's why we may also say that whenever a current carrying coil is kept in a magnetic field, it experiences a torque due to which it may start rotating. The basic construction of a DC motor. Primarily, the entire setup is enclosed in a frame called yoke. 
but the main parts of a DC motor are the field magnets sometimes referred to as stators the armature or the coil sometimes even it may be replaced by the term rotor the split rings or commonly referred to as the commutators and the carbon brushes obviously the setup needs to be connected to a source of current because this current will ensure movement in the coil this is also an overview of the different parts of a dc motor but we shall not go into the details for all the parts because this is beyond the scope of the syllabus so we shall confine ourselves only up to the main parts of the dc motor beginning with the outer frame as it is known by the name of yoke it provides protection to the rotating and the other part of the machine from moisture dust it's an iron body which provides a path for the flux to complete the magnetic circuit and it provides mechanical support for the poles and is made up of low reluctance materials such as cast iron, silicon steel, etc. Now the magnets, sometimes referred to as the field magnets. Now there is an option when I talk about the magnets. We may use a permanent magnet or an electromagnet. In fact, in all commercial motors, electromagnets are used. What is the advantage of using an electromagnet? The advantage will be in terms of the strength. Obviously the strength of the electromagnet can be changed. We can increase the strength of the electromagnet by increasing the number of windings. So stronger is the magnetic field, more will be the speed of rotation as more will be the torque experienced by the coil. So in all commercial motors we make use of electromagnets. Now there is a specific thing that needs to be remembered that is the designing, the construction of the pole pieces. So the construction of the pole is done using the lamination of particular shape to reduce the power loss due to eddy current. Whenever any appliance is being designed it is extremely important to ensure that the structure should be such which is energy efficient that is the energy losses should be minimized. You will be learning about the eddy current losses in your senior classes. Pole shoe is an extended part of a pole due to its typical shape. It enlarges the area of the pole so that more flux can pass through the air gap to armature. What is air gap? Air gap is actually the space between the rotor and the stator. Now you should remember that the air gap should be minimal. I repeat once again, air gap is the space between the rotor and the stator. The rotor is the movable part while the stator is the stationary part of the motor. The air gap has important effects and is generally as small as possible as a large gap has a strong negative effect on performance. It is the main source of the low power factor at which motors operate. Field winding. The coil wound on the pole core are called field coils. Field coils are connected in series to form field winding. Current is passed through the field winding in a specific direction to magnetize the poles and pole shoe. Thus, magnetic flux is produced in the air gap between the pole shoe and armature. Coming to the armature. Now the armature is made up of a coil comprising of several turns of insulated copper wire. We make use of several turns so as to ensure a strong magnetic field. The material that is used is of high permeability. High permeability means it will allow to be magnetized quickly. It is made up of low reluctance cast steel or cast iron material sometimes. Now the core, the core is made up of soft iron sometimes also. Next the important part of the electric motor is the split ring commutator which is used to reverse the direction of current flowing through the coil after every half rotation. The split rings as the name itself suggests we make use of a setup that comprises of two half rings. Let me just zoom in the picture so that this becomes a bit more clear to you all. As you can see, this is the commutator.
Now sometimes it becomes a bit difficult for the students to relate the conceptual diagram of DC motor as it is given in the textbooks with the actual setup of a DC motor because both are quite different from one another but actually for the sake of convenience in understanding the conceptual diagram is used but here you can see the actual setup of a DC motor you can see the yoke you can see the coil you can also see the brushes that will be discussed in the next part but for the time being you just take a close look at how the commutator looks like as I told you these are two half rings and these ensure that the direction of current changes or reverses after every half rotation of the coil brushes these are graphite brushes the brushes in a DC motor have two purposes, first they carry current to the armature and they work with the commutator to switch the current to the proper winding of the armature as it rotates. So this ensures a correct magnetic field to make the motor run. Now just take a quick look into the conceptual diagram of DC motor where all the important parts have been shown properly. This is actually the setup that is commonly given in your textbooks and uh, I have zoomed it at a little bit so that it becomes properly visible to you all. You can see the main parts, you can see the pole pieces, you can see the coil which is kept in the magnetic field. Obviously the direction of the magnetic field is from north to south and the ends of the coil has been connected to the split ring commutator. The commutator is also going to rotate along with the coil when the coil rotates the rings the split rings also rotate the brushes carbon brushes are lightly pressing against the commutator this means the brushes remain stationary they are not moving the commutator keeps on rotating along with the coil but the brushes remain stationary they are simply pressing against the commutator they are touching the commutator they are not directly connected to the commutator and it is through the brushes that current enters the commutator as you can see that the brushes the ends of the brushes have been connected to the positive and the negative terminals of the source of current so this is the conceptual diagram of a dc motor as you can see in your textbooks now you can also try and understand the picture that i have shown over here which shows how the magnetic fields are interacting with each other you can see how the current carrying conductor placed in the magnetic field is experiencing a change in the alignment of the domains domain is actually the internal structure which undergoes a change whenever it is subjected to an external magnetic field now as i am talking about the interaction between two magnetic fields obviously there is a change in an alignment of domains that is responsible for creating a certain amount of magnetization in these materials and this interaction is responsible for the torque experienced by it so this is actually how this interaction is taking place as you can see in these diagrams so talking about the torque that is experienced by a dc motor we have already studied about the magnitude of force experienced by the conductor kept in a uniform magnetic field that is given by f equal to i b l sin theta where i is the strength of current l is the length of the conductor and b is the strength of the magnetic field theta is the angle formed between the direction of field and current so obviously the force experienced by the conductor is maximum when theta is equal to 90 degree that is the conductor is kept perpendicular to the magnetic field so talking about the torque torque is given by force multiplied by the lever arm so we get an expression for torque as iba sin theta this is just for an extra bit of understanding this is beyond the scope of your syllabus so we don't really know need to get into the derivation part we should simply understand that whenever this coil is placed in the magnetic field it is experiencing a torque due to which it starts rotating now how this rotation is possible let us understand it quickly so in case of a dc motor the input is electrical energy and the output is in the form of mechanical energy 
and obviously the direction in which the coil is going to rotate is given by Fleming's left hand rule so very quickly we can get an understanding for this rule that when the current carrying conductor is placed in the uniform magnetic field it experiences a force the force is perpendicular to both the direction of field and current so now with the help of this elementary model we can see how the motor works so for the sake of understanding for simplicity it is shown in this diagram that there is only one particular turning instead of having number of turns actually as i was telling you that in commercial motors we make use of several turns of wire but just for this elementary model a single turn has been shown it is placed in field provided by the north and south pole of the magnet two commutator segments that is the split ring as you can see the brushes connected to the source of current now the turn of co the coil is rotating along with the commutator and it is free to move about an axis brushes connected to the batteries are fixed and slides over commutator as i was telling you that the brushes simply touch the commutator commutator segment which comes in contact with left brush gets positive polarity and the segment in contact with the right brush gets negative polarity of the battery so you can see the manner in which the commutator is going to rotate along with the coil when the current enters the coil through the commutator you can see the manner in which the coil will start rotating so we can see because of the action of commutator and brushes conductor on left side always carries current in one direction and the conductor on the right side always carries current in the opposite direction therefore conductor on left side always experience force in the upward direction as per fleming's left hand rule and the conductor on the right side always gets downward force this is known as commutator action therefore we can say that the work of commutator the brushes is to change the direction of current and that's why this name split ring commutator is given so this is how basically an electric motor functions there are different types of dc motors brush dc motors brushless dc motors stepper dc motors the pictures of which have been shown on your screen each one have got their own advantages and disadvantages now again i would like to tell you that this is just for an extra bit of understanding you don't really need to know about the different types of dc motors but since it is always uh, beneficial if we are trying to collect a little bit of information more than what is required in the syllabus so just for the sake of understanding you can know that we are having different types of dc motors which have got their own sets of advantages and disadvantages and that's why they are put to different uses so you can have a shunt motor which shunt motor in which the field winding is connected in parallel with the armature you can have a compound motor like this type of motor has two field windings one of which is connected in parallel with the armature and the other in series with it and then you are having a series motor in which the armature and field winding are connected in series so as i was telling you that each type of motor has got its own uses to dc shunt motor is uses in, used in lathes fans pump disc and band saw drive requiring moderate torques series motor is used in electric traction high speed tools and compound motor is found in rolling mills and other load requiring large momentary torques so as we all know that dc motors are commonly employed in so many appliances so it becomes extremely important for us to understand its principle its construction and its working and from the examination point of view also it is a very important question so it is very important for you to practice its basic construction understand what are the main components of dc motor and how that works you should be able to find out the manner in which the current flows in every part of the coil that is deciding the way the force is created in that coil 
so using fleming's left hand rule very easily we can decide the manner in which the coil is going to rotate that is whether it is going to rotate in the clockwise direction or anti clockwise direction so depending upon the direction in which current is flowing and the direction in which field is applied we can decide the direction of force